Okay, so in the previous discussion of algebra, right, we had learned about identities. I will just share the YouTube video which we had recorded last time, our previous class. Okay, where is it? Yes, okay. This is the one, right? Okay, do you remember? This class about algebraic multiplication and, and identities? Yes. Okay, great. So we had done these basic identities, right? So we had uh, multiplied uh, these two expressions to obtain the generic rule, right? Now, we know that x plus a into x plus b always turns out to be this x square plus a plus b into x plus a b, where a and b is any constant. So now if we replace a and b by any constant value, let's just take an example. Let's say if I just tell you that uh, I, let's say I want to just multiply x plus two into x plus three. So I don't really have to multiply it. Knowing this algebraic identity, I can right away write the answer. I know it is going to be of this form. It is going to be x square plus a plus b x, a plus b is two plus three, so five x plus a into b, which is two into three, which is six, okay? So that's the advantage of knowing these algebraic identities. If I change the values of these constants a and b, I can right away write the result of this multiplication or I can do the reverse of it. Like if I have this, I can write the factorized form. What is factorized form? Uh, it's writing the thing as like um, a product of two things. Yes, right, product of two or more things. Yeah. Right. So those, those are factors. So if I tell you that there are three factors of an algebraic expression, that just means that if you multiply those three things, you will get the algebraic expression. So those three are the factors. Like in this case, what are the factors of x square plus 5x plus 6? Uh, x plus 5x plus 6? Yes. Uh, x plus 2 and x plus 3. Right, so it has these two factors. X plus two is one of the factors. X plus three is another factor. Mm -hmm. if, if you multiply these two, you will get this back, okay? Fine, so in this class, we'll move on to learning few more identities. And then once we know these identities, we are going to use them to learn about factorization, okay? So given the expression in this expanded form, we should be able to use the identities to write the factorized form, representing it as product of expressions. Okay, so this is the set of identities which I plan to cover in today's class. So these are the most commonly used ones. If you remember these, this is good enough. Okay, so now to derive these identities, I would actually want you to do this multiplication, get a pen, a pen and paper and actually multiply this and get the result. Okay, I'll give you some time to do that. So if you have to find A plus B whole cube, what you can do is, you already know these identities, A plus B whole square, right? So what you can do is you can multiply it like this. So A plus B whole cube would be A plus B into A plus B square, right? And you already know what this is. A plus B square is A square plus B square plus two AB. So you can write this as A plus B into A square plus B square plus two AB. Now you can multiply this further and get the answer. So okay, take, okay. take a few minutes, okay. multiply it, then just tell me the final result. Similarly, multiply all these. So if you have three things to multiply, you can, you know, like uh, similar to what we do with numbers. If I ask you to multiply 15, 10, and 25, you can do it in steps, right? Maybe you can do 15 into 25 and get the result and then multiply that result to 10. So same thing we'll do here. So here you have, instead of numbers, you have algebraic expressions. Like in this case, four, 
you have three algebraic expressions to be multiplied. So you can multiply two of them together and whatever is the result, multiply that result with x plus c. Okay, and when you have cube or square, so in this case you have a square, so you can do a plus b plus c into a plus b plus c, right? That is what a square means. So square of anything is the thing multiplied to itself. Right? And if it's cubed, then multiply to itself three times. Okay, so this is what you will get after you multiply, right? And there is just one more, which is actually derived from these ones only. So if you know a plus b whole square is this, a minus b whole square is this. If you add these two, a plus b whole square plus a minus b whole square, then this 2ab term will get cancelled, right? You will get twice of a square plus b square. And if you subtract these two, this a square and b square will get cancelled. Like this is what I mean. If you do a plus b whole square minus a minus b whole square, what would you get? So a plus b whole square is this, a square plus b square plus 2ab. A minus B whole square is this, A square plus B square minus 2AB. So if you subtract this minus this, then A square minus B square will get cancelled, right? It will be A square minus A square, B square minus B square. Mm. And 2AB minus of minus 2AB. So this will become 4AB, right? Because this would become plus 2AB. Basically, you are taking this minus of this. Got it? So this is another identity which is useful in solving a few questions. So this, this is all you need to remember to factorize it. So now when I say factorize, you will be given expressions in this form. Sorry. You know, the way you see it in the RHS here. And if you know the identities, then it will be easy for you to write the factorized form. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you can always multiply and maybe do trial and error, use some theorem to figure out one solution and then divide and figure out other factors. Okay, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll teach you about, about algebraic division also. So that's another route to, fa to factorize. For example, if I give you a number uh, 225, okay? Now, if you wanted to factorize it, you definitely know five is a factor. Okay, so now to figure out what other factors, what you can do is you can just divide this by five and whatever number is left, then you can look at that number and figure out other factors, right? That, that's one way of doing it. Yes. That, that is what you do in prime factorization also. So you can do similar thing with algebraic expressions too. So if you are given an expression and you know one of the factors, so for example, if I'm given uh, x square plus 5x plus 6, and I know x plus 2 is one of the factors, so I can divide this by x plus 2 and get the remaining factor, okay? So in this case, I mean, you know, we, if this is a simple expression, we can obtain the factors without actually getting into division, but in some cases where you have the original expression as a degree four or degree five expression. And if you're sure that one of, uh, if, you, if you know one of the factors, then you can actually divide and simplify the expression. So we will discuss this in the next class. Today, we'll just use algebraic identities to factorize. Okay, so let's get started with a few questions. I'll go to whiteboard. And you can make a note of these identities because you will need these identities to solve questions. Okay, so let's start with degree one expressions. Okay, then we'll move on to degree two and then to degree three. So first step, if you have a degree one expression, just see if you can take something common out of it. For example, if I tell you, if I ask you to factorize this, what would be the factorization? 
um, we can keep x and y outside. Right. You can take four common. So whenever you have something common, that's always the first step. Look for the common things. So you can always take the common part out. So both of these terms have four common, right? There is four multiplied. There are two terms, 4x and 4y. And both these terms have four common. So you can take four outside and write it like this, right? So it's factorized. Now, what are the factors? One factor is four, the other factor is x plus y, okay? Similarly, if I give you something like this, then what would you take common? Four mm, x. Yes. So now you will have uh, three factors, there is a, four is a factor, then you have x as a factor, then you have x plus y as a factor, okay? So the simplest way to factorize is take, take out the common factor. If there is a common factor, just take out the common factor. Factorize this, x squared plus seven x. We will take x outside and keep x plus seven inside. Yes, right. So now we have two factors of this expression, x and x plus seven, okay? So when you multiply these two, if you multiply these two, you will obtain the original expression. Hmm. Okay, that's the meaning of factorization. So you express it as a product of factors. And if you multiply these factors together, you will get the original expression back, okay? 6a square b minus 10ab square. How do we factorize this? What? Always look for the common things first, okay? In most of the cases, you know, that, that will itself solve the issue or if it does not, then we'll have to look for algebraic identities, usage of algebraic identities wherever we can apply. But in this case, it's pretty straightforward because there are common things. So, what is the common factor in the two terms here? Uh, the common factor is um, A, B. Yes, there is A, there is B. Can you think of something else also? Yes, I am thinking uh, two. Yes, right. So you can take two A, B common. So in the first term, what would be left is, so we, we would write the remaining part here. So our object- The remaining part would be a 3a. Yes, right. And then a minus? Yep. A five? Um, B. Correct, right? So when we multiply this back, we'll get the original expression. If you multiply 2ab to 3a, we will get 6a square b. And then you multiply 2ab to 5b, you will get 2 5 a 10ab square, which is the original thing back. So yes, this is the factorized version. So the factors are 2, then a, then b, and then this 3a minus 5b. So you have been able to express it as a product of these four factors. Okay, excellent. So this is the, the basic factorization by taking things common. Now we'll go to the next level where we have a quadratic expression and we use some techniques to factorize it. Basically, we just use the algebraic identities, okay? W what is a quadratic e equation? Um, which has uh, the highest degree as two. Correct. Yes. So your algebraic expression can be expressed as terms. We can find out the degree of each term, right? We have discussed this in previous classes too. How do we find the degree of each term? Each term is a product of variables and constants. Yes. If you add the powers of all the variables in that term, that will give you the degree of the term. So you can find the degree of each term and whatever is the highest degree, that will be the degree of the entire expression. So if the degree of the entire expression is two, that's a quadratic expression or equation. Okay, before moving to quadratic expression, now let's discuss one more case of 
Uh, can you pause the recording once? Okay, Mukta said. You, you can show the magic without pausing the <laughs> recording. Okay, I'm sure our students would love to see the magic too. I have this piece of paper in my hand. Okay. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> that does look like levitation. Yay. Oh, no. <laughs> there yeah. is a pen. Okay, good. That's a nice trick. Okay, and where were we? Yes. Okay. So now, before moving on to quadratic factorization of quadratic expressions, we'll just look at one more case of taking common. Okay. So the uh, the initial questions which we looked at, all the terms had something common, and we just took the common out. Okay. Now. We, we can have another situation where all the terms don't have something common. Maybe we have four terms and there is something common between two of the terms and there is something else common between the other two terms. So let's look at one of those cases, okay? Let's say we have something like uh, AH plus AK and uh, plus BH plus BK. So in this expression, there are four terms, but if you look at the four terms there, you can't take out something common from all the four terms. But if you break it into two pieces, okay, there is something common between these two and there is something common between these two, right? Yeah. So now we can apply the same strategy, but now we are just doing it in two steps. So we'll take common, whatever is common between these two, and then we'll take common, whatever is common between these two. So what we get here is A is common, right? Yes. Okay. So this is what we'll get, right? And what do we get from these two? Um, B is common. Yes. And what will be inside the bracket? H plus K. Yes, right. Okay, so now that's step one. Now step two is, now you can look at this as a term, okay? So, you know, our definition of term mm -hmm. is, it's a product of variables and constants, okay? So this is a product of things, right? So it's an expression multiplied to B is multiplied to H plus K. So you can look at this as a complex term, one single term. Now, do we have anything common between these two terms? Um, yes, H plus K. H plus K is common, right? Okay, so you can look at it as A multiplied to H plus K. You can look at this as one unit. So A multiplied to this box, and then you have B multiplied to this box. So this box is common between them. So this box can be taken common. And what will be left if I take this box out of this? A, uh, plus B. Correct. There is just A left here. If I take H plus A common, and then it's just B left here. Okay, so this is the factorized form. And we'll be using this technique a lot, okay? so. The, the first problem that we saw, the initial few problems, we, we had something common in all the terms. This is another category where the, com the, the commonality is not among all the terms, but few of the terms have something common and the remaining terms have something else common. Okay, so we just do it in steps. Okay, now let's, let's do two more of these questions and then let's look at the quadratic part. Okay. I'll just give you one question and I'll give you some time to solve it on your own. 6mx minus 3nx, okay, plus 2my minus ny. So now I'll, I'll give you some time to think about it. Which terms would you like to club together? And what will be the final factorized answer. So you, you won't get it in one step, that will be, it'll be minimum of two steps. Take your time and solve it and let me know what is the factorized answer. Okay, Muktasid, so you got this answer, that's good.
okay now uh, you could have done it in two ways right you chose to group these two together yes that is what you did right and you took 3x common because there is a common yeah. x here and 3 i x. could have uh, taken the uh, terms with m common and the terms with n common too yes that was another grouping that could have been done right you could have yeah. grouped minus 3 and x and uh, both would work yes so you could have grouped these two together because there is n common in these two and you could have grouped these two together so both would give you the same answer let's try both ways actually so let's try with this grouping so when you do this this grouping uh, for, what is the common part between these two terms 2x right and uh, so if you take 2x outside there'll be 3m that'll be left so when you multiply it back you get 6mx back and if you have taken okay sorry we should have taken 3x okay so we take 3x back so what you get is 2 2m here and what is left here just n uh, yeah just n and what we can take common here is is uh y. we'll just write y right so you get 2m minus n here and now when you look at these two terms this 2m minus n is common in both so you can take that common so this is just like a box so this box multiplied to 3x and this box multiplied to y so you take the box outside what is left here is 3x plus y so that's one way of factorizing it the other way would have been if you group it in a different way so you could have grouped it like this 6mx with 2my okay so i'm just rewriting the expression by just moving you know uh, putting the terms in different positions and then group minus 3nx with minus ny this is the same expression just re reordered okay so now we could have taken common from these two what would be common there is m common and there is also 2 common so you could take 2m common and what will be left inside here is 3x right and here we'll just have y and what can you take common from these two terms you can definitely take n you can yeah. also take a minus common net right? both of them have minus yeah minus n right so you can take minus n common and what will be left is 3x plus y now when you look at these two terms this box 3x plus y is common in both of them so you could take 3x plus y outside and what is left here is 2m what is left here is n okay so you get the same answer the factors of this expression are there are two factors 3x plus y and the other factor is 2m minus n and you could get the factorized version by grouping it anyway okay fine so we'll stop this class here i'll give you a set of questions which will involve factorizing just by taking things common right it it can either be something common out of all the terms or be taking common by grouping the terms okay and in the next class once you are comfortable with this one then we'll move further to the next level and factorize quadratic and cubic expressions okay so bye for now and i'll stop the class here okay thank you for joining mm -hmm.